Hi, I'm Dr. Earl here at the floor at Dove Lewis. I have a 12-year-old female spade Labrador who presented with a history of not being herself for the past three days, having a little diarrhea, having a cough, and today the owner came home to find her abdomen distended and her unable to walk. Um, at that time, x-rays were taken that revealed a very large globoid heart, and she was referred here where we performed a TFAST, where indeed she has pericardial effusion. So we're going to perform a pericardiosynthesis. So we've shaved from basically the fourth intercostal space to the eighth to ninth intercostal space. Uh, the actual site you're gonna go is at the fifth, and this is the right side. You do not want to use the left side as that's where the coronary vessels are, so you risk lacerating those vessels with the, if you perform it on that side. Um, we're going to perform a local block at the site that we're probably going to use at the fifth intercostal space right now. I have lidocaine uh, diluted one-to-one -one with sterile saline, 2%. She's already received hydromorphone for pain control, and she's going to be started on fluids momentarily. So at this time, we're doing a sterile surgical scrub um, with dilute chlorhexidine and alcohol to prepare the site for the tap as it should be done under sterile conditions. So we'll start our tap. We're going to open our sterile gloves. For this size of dog, and actually most large dogs, we're going to use a 14 gauge uh, catheter. In smaller dogs or a cat, you will not be using a 14 gauge long catheter. You'll be using more of a 16 to 18. Um, the gauge is important that it is a large gauge catheter because catheter because you do want to get this effusion out as quickly as you can and not linger in the pericardium any longer. So we've set up a three-way stopcock, which is what we will be attaching this to once we get it into the pericardium. So in this procedure, when you use ultrasound guidance, you will have a clean hand and a dirty hand. So we will be, you roll that ball thing. Nice. So this, I'm left-handed, so this is going to be my dirty hand, my right hand, where I'm going to look for the most obvious window for the effusion. Move that. Right, right there, that's good. So you can see here, here's the heart, there's the pericardial effusion, there's the body wall. So we're gonna go pretty much right there. Um, so at this time, I remove that, though you can also perform the tap with that in place if you want. Go to the cranial aspect of the rib to avoid the intercostal vessels and nerves that come off the caudal aspect. And basically just go straight in, poking. You're gonna rinse the catheter and look for blood in the hub. There we go. So you advance, you get blood in the hub, you immediately advance it, attach your hub of your needle to your catheter and then you try to withdraw. And it may not work. And it won't necessarily come very fast. The goal is just to be slow and steady. Um, we always have an animal on a continuous ECG, first of all, because it allows us to see the efficacy of our tap, because these animals typically present tachycardic. And as we effectively remove some of the blood from the pericardial space, their uh, rhythm will decrease. Another thing that's most important, though, is if you are actually physically touching the myocardium, you will actually see arrhythmias uh, be visible on the ECG, such as VPCs. If you see anything like that, you need to withdraw your catheter immediately because you're a little too close to the heart. As you can see from this, sometimes you don't have to take a lot off to get a fairly good response. Using the large gauge catheters we do, a lot of times we just tear a hole in the pericardium and don't actually remove a lot of the fluid physically, but that fluid goes into the pleural space where it'll be reabsorbed and is no longer causing uh, tamponade in the dog. So once you get a sample of fluid, um, certainly saving it for cytology and culture is something you can do, though another thing that's most important is to get a sample immediately and put it in a red top tube, as Joni will do. And pressure and uh, make sure that it's non-clotting hemorrhage. Um, if you get clotting hemorrhage, there's a chance that you may actually be in the heart, which is obviously where you do not want to be. Negative. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. Just gonna pull out. Okay. I'm gonna take the sample. 
I'm going to do another TFAS to examine the pericardial sac to see if indeed we've removed some of the effusion. As you can see, here's the heart, and now there's a substantial less effusion present down to almost minimal. So we have been successful with our pericardiosynthesis. Now this dog will go to ICU, where it'll be monitored overnight on a continuous ECG. Um, it's important to give your fluids immediately after performing this procedure because the animal's hemodynamic state is so unbalanced because they've been in a level of shock while the time their heart has not been working. So right now this dog has free uh, bolusine fluids. And then essentially she'll receive a workup to find out why she has pericardiosynthesis. So echocardiography, abdominal ultrasound is indicated, uh, coags. And that's how we do a pericardiosynthesis at Dove. <laughs>